Hi, welcome on to this video. We're going to develop now exercises one to six of the influence of monetary and fiscal policy on aggregate demand. Remember, this is the book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So the first question says, explain how each of the following developments would affect the supply of money, the demand for money and the interest rate. Illustrate your answers with diagrams. First, the Fed's bond traders buy bonds in the open market operation. So first, keep in mind that we have interest rate in the y-axis. Then we have here the demand, which is downward slope, is slope downward. And then the money supply is perfectly like inelastic. So then we say that is vertical. So here we have the monetary supply. Here we have the interest rate of equilibrium and the quantity of money in the market. Remember, in the x axis is going to represent the quantity of money, and then we have the money demand. When there is an open market operation of buying of these kind of assets, automatically the the Fed receives the titles or receives the bonds and instead of the bonds inject money into the economy then when then in this inject money into the economy we in, we said that it's like expansion policy so we have a here an increase in the money supply because the banks they have more money available to put into into the the market then as a consequence we face a lower interest rate and more quantity of money into the market. B, an increase in credit card availability reduces the amount of cash people want to hold. So then you can say that it affects um, straightforward the money demand because people don't want to have more uh, cash. So then we have here a decrease in the demand for money. Then should be a shift to the left. As a consequence, this disequilibrium will bring a lower interest rate but the same quantity of money of equilibrium c the federal reserve reduces banks reserve requirement so then uh, the banks they have more money available to lend uh, it out because of this uh, relaxation of this restriction so then in this uh, the consequence we have here an increase of the quantity of money into the market it's expansionist policy then we face a lower interest rate and more money into the market d households decide to hold more money uh, to use for holiday shopping so this we can infer as an increase in the money demand uh, recall the, the increase in the money demand we will say that a shift to the right as a consequence due to the money supply is not affected we have an increase in the interest rate e a wave of optimism boosts business investment and expands aggregate demand so then people naturally need more money to to carry out the transactions so then we we can infer a shift to the right to the money demand as a consequence higher interest rate at the same level quantity of money into the market second the federal reserve expands the money supply by five percent a use the theory of liquidity preference to illustrate in a graph the impact of this policy on the interest rate so then again we have here the interest rate we have on the y in the x axis the quantity of money so then uh, stop the video and think about it where which curve should move and why once you have reviewed this a hopefully we have inferred that in this case we have an expansion of the monetary supply uh, due to due to there is an expense of by five percent as a consequence we face a lower interest rate and more quantity of money in the market b use the model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply to illustrate the impact of this change in the interest rate on output and the price level in the short run.
So then here, remember when we are talking about ADAS, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, we need to put in y-axis prices and the x-axis we have y, which is the product, the GDP, real GDP. So just um, assume that we start from the equilibrium. The, in the left part, we have the money, the money market. We have here the equilibrium R1 and M1 and the aggregate demand the money sorry the money de demand md1 then uh this was the movement because of the five percent increase in the money supply we are now phasing r2 into the market so remember what should be the expected change when we have a decrease in the interest rate the the immediate or the easiest one is to think about investment why Recall the situation with the with the houses, for example, with the real estate market. Usually, people don't have the the total money to pay to pay the apartments or or a house, so they need to borrow money. So when they need to borrow money, they are um, like influenced by the interest rate. The higher the 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 lower interest that you have or the lower temptation to ask for a loan but when the interest rates they are lower as is happening now but you are um you have like intention or yes you want to invest on, on a house so then for this reason we assume that the aggregate demand will shift to the right so there is an increase at the same level of prices so here we we start from the situation of p1 and um, then we move to p2 y2 due to the situation of the of the interest rate c when the economy makes the transition from its uh, short run equilibrium to its new long run equilibrium what will happen to the price level well as we saw here the situation of the price level due to the shift to the right of the aggregate demand keeping all the things the same we have the p2 and y2 so the level of prices increase and then uh, there is an there is not adjustment uh, with the with the long run aggregate supply that remember is not affected by the prices so th this is the situation so then what could happen in that way is that the aggregate supply can adjust these to keep the same level of production in the long run we will face uh, a decrease in the aggregate supply to aggregate supply to to keep the same the same level of output how will this change in the price level affect the demand for money and the equilibrium interest rate so then if the prices go up naturally people will need to hold more money so due to that when people need to hold more money it could be the case that the money supply will decrease, will increase to naturally shift to the right and then what should be the level of the interest rate? Well, it depends. If the aggregate or the money de demand uh, movement is higher than the movement of the money supply, probably the interest rate will increase. Conversely, when we have uh, a lower a lower increase in the money demand so then we're going to face a uh, lower interest rate compared with the R1 next is this analysis consistent with the proposition that money has real effect in the short run but neutral in the long run yes actually the level of output is exactly the same so it was a movement of the demand and then the movement or a shift in, into the supply and the only movement or the only real uh, change from the short run and long run was related with the uh, with the interest with the prices okay so it's what we have here at the end of the day the situation is exactly the same y1 but just the prices are higher suppose the a computer virus disabled the nation's automatic teller machines making withdrawals from bank accounts less convenient. As a result, people want to keep more cash on hand, increasing the demand for money. A. Assume the Fed does not change the money supply. According to the theory of liquidity preference, 
what happens to the interest rate what happens to the aggregate demand well in this situation so people don't don't want to keep more money in cash so then um well keeping the bank accounts is not convenient so it's better to keep in cash so the money supply should be should be definitely higher so shift to the right so we have an increase in the interest rate at the same level of quantity of money if we had a look to the situation of the aggregate uh, demand well here we have the higher interest rate will incentive to have or discourage investment so then we have a shift to the left so a decrease in the aggregate demand due to higher interest rates b if instead the fed wants to stabilize the aggregate demand how should it change the money supply well if suppose one decrease it can expand money supply why because when you you expand money supply we have a lower uh, interest rate and then more incentives uh, to invest c if it wants to accomplish this change in the money supply use open more operation what should it do well they can buy government bonds it means that they inject money into the economy so then banks or owners of these bonds they will have liquidity four consider two policies a tax cut that will last for only one year and a tax cut that is expected to be permanent which policy will stimulate greater spending by consumers which policy will have the greater impact on aggregate demand explain so well when we face temporary tax cuts and people know about it they are they are aware that this change is not going to last too much so the behavior is not going to be different actually the behavior is going to be basically the same so then there is not important impact in the aggregate demand but when we talk about um constant or a more long term frame this change in the tax cut this should be the case where the aggregate demand really should be uh, there is a really important shift on that five the economy is in a recession with high unemployment and low output a draw a graph of aggregate demand and aggregate supply to illustrate the current situation be sure to include the aggregate demand curve the short run aggregate supply curve and the long run aggregate supply curve so then we have here the situation of prices and quantity of output we have the aggregate demand um, so then there is a decrease in the aggregate demand because of the situation of the recession compared with the long run um, uh, long run aggregate supply definitely there is a disadjustment due to this decrease of the aggregate demand lower prices but lower quantity of output b identify an open market operation that would restore the economy to its natural rate well the aim is to increase the aggregate demand so remember they can inject money into the into the economy so they can buy government bonds and they can provide liquidity to the owners of these bonds c draw a graph of the money market to illustrate the effect of this open market operation show the resulting change in the interest rate well we had this situation it was the first um, the first step then we're going to increase the money supply to decrease the uh, interest rate and then to have a positive impact into the aggregate demand d draw a graph similar to the one in the part a to show the effect of the open market operation on output at the price level explaining words why the policy has the effect that you have shown in the graph well here we have the situation the aggregate demand and then we we have then this this adjustment so then the policy should be an increase from ad1 to ad2 to keep the same level y1 as the level of output six in the early 1980s new legislation allowed banks to pay interest on checking deposits which they could not do previously as we define money of in to include checking deposits uh what effect what if 
what effect did this legislation have on money demand explain well these two the i would say that is an increase because check deposits will increase the quantity of considered as money not only cash should be considered as money but check deposit as well so this should be a sum between these two these two parts and then at the end of the day there should be an increase in the quantity of um of money b if the federal reserve had maintained a constant money supply in the face of this change what would have happened to the interest rate so what would have happened to aggregate demand and aggregate supply well this one we have here the graph then we have r and and the level of out of quantity of money so this was the initial situation now there is an increase of we have now higher interest rate as a consequence having a look in the in the equilibrium of the of the nation we will have naturally uh an increase here sorry should be different should be the opposite because there is an increase um an in an, an increase in the aggregate demand so then should be higher prices but higher level of output c if the federal reserve had maintained a constant market interest rate the interest rate on non-monetary assets in the face of this change what change in money supply would have been necessary what would have happened to aggregate demand and aggregate supply well aggregate, aggregate output so then this situation in the morning market so what is the change now well the change here is that um, if the Federal Reserve had maintained constant market interest rate, the interest rate no monetary. Ah, okay, pay interest on checking deposits, which they cannot be previously. So then, uh, now people are more tempted to keep this money, right? Instead of instead of keeping in hands, so they will move to checking deposits. So then here I would say now that is the uh, that is the opposite. Is the first one should be the money demand two, and the second one should be the money demand one, because now people don't want to keep money in, you, in the, their hands. They prefer to keep into the banks. So then it should be a decrease in the in the cash, and then the um, the interest rate should be even lower. This is basically the difference. And then here, when we have here lower interest rates, so then naturally we are we are facing uh, here an expansion of the aggregate demand from A2 to A1. Then, okay, that's basically all. I hope it has worth. I hope it has been a better understanding of these exercises. As usual, this could be subtle because i just developed that for myself maybe i know that maybe it can make mistakes so if you find a way difference to solve the problems i'm more than happy to hear that thank you so much and have a great a wonderful day bye bye